Hey crew, I am really excited about today's video because this build basically does it all and I have always really enjoyed the Void Warlock and it might be my favorite class to play inside of Destiny 2. You can tank so much damage because of the subclass and mods we use. We literally have unlimited grenades which are one of the strongest things in PvE that you as a guardian can be taken advantage of and we have unlimited abilities and basically unlimited supers because of the exotic armor we are wearing and our primary weapon with a very unique role that came out this season that really sends this build into overdrive. Because of how well it all synergizes together, throw in some new well of light mods and stasis mods and we have a beast on our hands. With Witch Queen around the corner, this build and other void builds will become so much better with the void 3.0 update that Bungie is doing to all the void subclasses, so remember that. As you can see in the gameplay, I was in the first encounter of the Prophecy Dungeon and I wanted to show you all how much damage you can take with this build and easily survive it. And we all know how much of a pain those knights are in the Prophecy Dungeon. I jumped into the mob pit of Shirochi as well and we even survived that. So this build is a really great build for those who might struggle in that department. Also with this build, it's the build that I used to solo flawless the Prophecy Dungeon about two seasons ago. And it's so much better now with the addition of the new weapon, the new stasis mod, the new well mods. Everything flows so much better together that it makes this build such a beast. If you guys enjoy this video or found it helpful, then please hit that subscribe button for me and become part of the crew here. Also, if you're interested in getting some trials help, then follow me over on Twitch. And you can also join our Discord as well if you would like to. Both those links are in the pinned comments down below. If you have any questions or concerns about the video or about the build, or if you're not sure exactly how something works, leave those questions down in the comments and I will gladly answer them for you all. Okay, make sure to pay attention to the subclass, the mods, and the exotic, and the weapon we're using, because if you set it all up right and you understand the concept of what we're trying to do, it makes it so much easier and it's literally grenade after grenade after grenade as you've seen in the gameplay. Let's go over the subclass perks first because they are very important and they synergize so well with our exotic of choice and our weapon and the mods. First we have devour. This is our melee ability. Kills with this melee ability fully regenerates your health. For a short time afterwards, kills restore additional health. The additional health timer lasts for 10 seconds and that is the devour buff. Next we have feed the void. Consume your grenade energy to regenerate your health grants the devour effect. So we can proc devour by either getting a melee kill and proccing devour or consuming our grenade and that procs devour as well. Next we have insatiable. While the devour effect is active, killing enemies extends its duration and recharges your grenade. So when we proc devour, every time we get a kill, it resets the timer to 10 seconds, fully heals us and recharges our grenade energy. And it is a big chunk of grenade energy. And then last is our super, this is Vortex. Nova Bomb creates a singularity which continuously damages enemies trapped inside. Kills with Nova Bomb grant the devour effect as well. So you can proc devour with Nova Bomb, you can proc it with a melee kill, or you can proc it by consuming your grenade. Next we're combining our exotic of choice, our weapon of choice, and our mods that combine all together to send this build into overdrive and make it an absolute beast for you guys. First off, we have our exotic of choice. This is Nezerax Sin. The armor perk here is Abyssal Extractors. Void damage kills increase ability energy recharge rate. This is all of your abilities. It has a huge timer and it also adds to your super. That is considered an ability. So it regens your super much quicker as well. For our weapon, we have the Last Breath Auto Rifle. This is a 600 RPM auto rifle that drops in the prophecy dungeon. It drops from the cube room encounter, the second encounter. The encounter is a little annoying to deal with. If you guys have issues with it, let me know in the comments and I'll be able to help you out. Now the perk here is a really interesting perk combo. You can only get this perk combo on two weapons in the game. That's this auto rifle and the hand cannon judgment from the first encounter of the prophecy dungeon. Personally, I would, if you're gonna grind one or the other, grind the auto rifle because Anti-Barrier is a mod this season for only auto rifles. Hand cannons don't do anything this season as far as champions go. So get the auto rifle because it's an anti-barrier and it's a six month season. You're gonna need those barriers to go down 
The only other weapon that does barriers is I believe it's Ariana's Vow and that's it. So you're going to need a good auto rifle. The perk combo that you get on this is Osmosis. Using your grenade ability changes this weapon's damage type to match your subclass until you stow it. So when you throw out a grenade, it changes the last breath into a void auto rifle, which procs our Nezarak Zin exotic, and that gives us ability energy. It changes this weapon into a void weapon. On top of that, the second perk is Demolitionist. Kills with this weapon generate grenade energy, Activating your grenade ability reloads this weapon from reserves. So you're getting ability energy from the subclass. You're getting ability energy from the exotic helmet, which is proccing because we're getting void kills with the last breath auto rifle. And you're getting grenade energy from demolitionist on it. So three different things every time you kill one enemy is proccing grenade energy and giving you that grenade energy back. You literally can throw a grenade and get two kills, two red bar kills and you have a grenade. You can also throw a grenade, and if that grenade kills two or three enemies, you get a grenade back. That's how crazy this build is. For our mods on the helmet, you want Elemental Charge, become charged with light by picking up an Elemental Well. If the Elemental Well matches your subclass, you get two stacks of Charge with Light. And we're also double stacking Ashes to Assets, gain bonus Super Energy on grenade kills. On our gloves, we have Font of Might, picking up an Elemental Well, that matches your subclass energy type, grants a temporary bonus to weapon damage of that same elemental type. Since we're using void in our primary and our secondary, you get the bonus damage. We're also running grenade kickstart. When you throw your grenade, when you use your grenade, you get a small amount of grenade energy back. This is about 25% right off the bat after you throw a grenade. We're also using anti-barrier on our gauntlets here for the auto rifle. If you need unstoppable, you can slot that for the fusion rifle as well here instead of grenade kickstart. On our chest piece, we have protective light. This consumes both our stacks of charges light when we take critical damage, but allows us to survive much more. On our boots, we have elemental ordnance. Defeating a combatant with a grenade spawns an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type. So we're spawning void wells this way. Void weapon takedowns will spawn a elemental well and we're using two void weapons we're also rocking particle deconstruction the huge damage boost for fusion rifles and linear fusion rifles and this really helps us out because we're using null composure in our secondary which is also void so that plays into the subclass and nezarak sin and then we're rocking 1000 voices or 1k of course because it's so strong and make sure to slot that unstoppable on your gauntlets if you need unstoppable. On screen, you'll see the best hunter build and the best titan build that I have done so far this season. If you have not seen these or checked them out, make sure you do. They're really great builds and you guys will definitely enjoy them.